This right here is the future liberals want for America. Hear this? Chemicals in the water. Turning chemicals uh, in America. This is what the this country's in the country. water. They're turning the frogs. You see people like and Hillary and, and they're coming on you. TV. I they're know coming about Trump. Trump. He's trying to be right. engineered. I know my rights. I know my rights. Turn the frogs. I know gay. my rights. I know my rights. <sighs> Sorry. Relax. Let's drink a nice glass of water. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Hey guys, how's it going? Jay and I'm Johnny here with a drops mic special review of the new Father John Misty album, Pure Comedy. Father John Misty is a big name in the sub bop label, the Seattle area right now. Folk rock alternative scene. Um, currently on his third major album. Uh, as far as I can tell, his most ambitious to date, whether it be shown by the 75 minute runtime or the 1800 word essay that he put out to go with it. Previously, I haven't gotten super into Father John Misty besides uh, singles off of his last album, uh, I Love You Honey Bear, the title track from that song, between his beautifully sincere vocals and the very relaxing, soothing, kind of <laughs> background instrumentals. It's a very beautiful song and I'd recommend listening to it. However, after hearing this, I might have to go back and revisit that full album. Pure Comedy caught my attention with the single, self-titled track, Pure Comedy. Right off the bat, Tillman sets the stage for an album with a track that politically says the most out of nearly any other track, or at least any other single, released this year. Uh, there's lyrics that this extremely dark tone, uh, portraying the dark humor and irony of really just the human condition in general, tackling everything from religion, gender, the political system. All this is cast with a very sweet melody and uh, this slowly progressing instrumental that goes just super cold at the end. I just love how bitter it gets towards the end. Ugh, such a good song. Ever since I saw that uh, music video for the first time, I'm just like, this is good stuff. From there, we got two more fantastic singles, uh, Total Entertainment Forever, Ballad of a Dying Man, and a month or two later, we have the full pure comedy album. And it's fantastic. The single Pure Comedy really does set the tone for what you see throughout the rest of the album. Because what he mentions on Pure Comedy, generally he goes a lot deeper into on the rest of the album. Whether it be uh, religion or politics, really just things of that nature. The second track, for example, Total Entertainment Forever. <laughs> I love this track so much. Um, we get a much more upbeat, fun tune, but when looking more into the lyrics, uh, we get, we get this picture painted of this totally just desensitized nation constantly being blasted with completely pointless, stupid entertainment. Still, the lightheartedness he sings it with brings this sense of really just total hilarity to it. It's insane. It, it brings me to the biggest point of the album. I think you kind of have to have some sense of humor or dark sense of humor to totally understand the full implications of the songs. That sounds like a pretentious way to put it, but uh, I feel like you'll get more out of it going into it with a very dark sense of humor. The comedy Tillman refers to on this album isn't funny on the surface at all, but uh, when looking into it further, you kind of see the irony of the human condition and how much is being wasted on us just to fail and fail again and again. It just becomes funny in the saddest way possible. Besides making a totally coherent album here, there are also single tracks that definitely stick out to me. Uh, Ballad of a Dying Man, one of the singles released, just has this incredibly sincere, sincere, I have to say sincere would be like one of the main words to sum up Father John Misty. I love that sincerity of his. No, this incredibly sincere melancholy to it, uh, along with a very catchy verse and chorus coinciding, it just makes this track impossible to ignore. 
When the God of love returns, there will be hell to pay. This song takes, you know, the idea of Jesus coming again to judge the living and the dead. And uh, <laughs> he uh, is not happy with what he sees, pretty much saying, uh, there's the lyric towards the end of the song, well, I mean, <laughs> I don't really have anywhere to send you to. If this isn't hell, I don't know what is. The memo is just biting, which I actually believe was the first, the actual first single release, but it, it missed me. The memo is just biting, speaking about uh, how little thought goes into things currently and how we'd rather just pay to believe something than actually have something real. He refers to like modern art, he refers to boy bands. Uh, and then this bridge comes in towards the end of the track with these kind of robotic, almost sound like Siri vocals or something. And it's it's so strange, but listening to it, it just makes so much sense when you're kind of just taking it in. It's beautiful. All these songs, of course, being built originally on a simple piano or guitar line with backing instrumentation that comes in as the song progresses. I suppose my only real issue with the album is that structurally, sometimes the songs can feel a little bit off. For example, on a 75 minute long album, uh, leaving LA did not need to take up 13 minutes of it. And I know Tillman makes fun of people on this exact track for not wanting a 10 verse song and, oh, I used to like Father John Misty before he wrote songs with 10 verses in it. But I gotta say, as interesting lyrically as it is, on repeat listens, the song can get kind of dry. Uh, and maybe, maybe he's even making a statement here uh, about how Nowadays, everyone just wants instant gratification with their music. I don't care. The track gets a little boring after a while. Then we have the opposite, too, where the track can kind of end a little bit abruptly occasionally. Like on the third track, uh, things that would have been helpful to know before the apocalypse. I love the track melodically, lyrically, and sonically, which is why I wish it had a bit stronger of an ending. Besides a couple moments like that, I'm really digging this album. Even for such a long album, Father John Misty stays really entertaining, really thoughtful, and uh, instrumentally very sweet throughout the entire thing. Um, good album, probably going to be one of my favorites of the year. Uh, what do you think of this album? This is just my opinion. You don't have to like it. If you didn't think so, you can explain why you didn't like it. Or, if you're like, Jane, I liked it more than you, this review didn't give it half enough credit as it deserves, you can talk about that down in the comments too. Or you can leave a like or a dislike and then I can get YouTube famous. Uh, it was the word of Jane Namjadi. Father John Misty, pure comedy, drops Mike.